So today, the uh, kind of we're going to do a kind of slow when we get to the swimming portion of it. If you have a one or two, maybe three at the very most uh, hand weight, we're going to use those. If shoulders will handle that. Uh, and our big thing on the swim workout part is we're doing a 15, a 30, a 45, and a 60 second swim on each one of the strokes and kicks, as well as other things, of course. Uh, so pace yourself. And when we do the swim part, it's going to be slow, meaning like, when we, let's say we do backstroke. Well, what are we doing first? Freestyle. So we're just going to pause each stroke, like for a count of one. You can count to yourself, but we're going to go slow and with the hand weight. Last week, we did the fast repeat. Now we're doing more of a slow repeat. But we're going to start with stretching, as always. So with the stretching, we st always start with postural stretching. So be as tall as you can and do your shoulder rolls. Tons of noise on here. Oh, yeah. Well, I can use it, I thought. Uh, so when we talked about this every time because we're a lot, sitting a lot for all of us. So uh, when you're sitting, make sure you take a break at least every 30 minutes. And if it's just simple shoulder rolls, but you got to make sure you're tall, don't be slouched. Or shoulder pinches, that's a more subtle one if you just don't want people to see what you're doing if you're on Zoom or something. But you got to have good posture as you're doing these stretches. If you have the ability to create movement, like with your arms, kind of going in and out, then because posture is sustained, gravity is just holding you there. If you create movement with the postural stretches, now make sure your neck is relaxed. So we've talked about the shoulder blades. If you bring your shoulder blades down, Toward your waist, as your arms go back, it actually takes pressure off this part of your neck because it cannot contract if you contract this part of that same muscle. So if you want to practice to bring the shoulder blades down, on Thursday, of course, when we do our shoulder exercises, we spend quite a bit of time working on your lower traps. But even when you're doing these, you can do one arm up, one arm down. But, and even the down arm, you can reach down a little bit further to bring that shoulder blade down. But these should feel good. You bring your arm up and then you can also stretch to the side. You have lots of options, but all of these should feel good as you do it. I mean, you could do, remember the old days, you do your little, what was it, Jack Lane? All that is is creating movement. So every half hour, do 20 or 30 seconds of something. It could be just sitting, standing and marching, but be tall and have your smartphone or computer set up if you're at a computer so that it reminds you to do that. Otherwise, it'll be an hour and your body's gonna start getting stiff. So on that, we're also gonna do some shoulder stretches today. So you're gonna reach across with your arm. Like I said, on our Thursday workout, when we do the shoulder strengthening, we stretch a little bit longer. Today, we're just kind of doing more of a warm up type stretch on that. We still spend about 10 minutes though. And then place that hand over the top of your shoulder and push that elbow a little bit more. Make sure it's not a shoulder joint, so that front of the shoulder shouldn't be hurting. It might have a little compression, but not pain. And then slide the hand behind your head and push that, those fingertips further down your back. Be tall though, try not to push your head too much forward if you can help it. Now you can lean to the side if you'd like and get a nice side stretch with it. That's just bonus on that. Stretches only slightly more with the shoulder. That. And then switch arms. Again, reaching just across your body, hands behind your triceps, maybe toward your lats, depending on your flexibility. Grabbing that elbow and just gently pulling across. Like I said, you shouldn't have too much compression in the front of the shoulder, maybe a little, but it's not like a lot of pain. And then place that hand over the shoulder as you push it further down. All that does is change the angle of how we're stretching and what we're stretching. And then behind your head, pushing the fingertips down your back a little bit. If you wanna to lean to the side, you get bonus points, but as long as it feels good as you do it. And then relax, reach behind your back, grab your wrist, above your wrist, I'd say your forearm, and pull across. I don't tend to want to pull on the hands. Keep the wrist happy. So re grab proximal to your wrist. So above your wrist. Not, yes, toward your elbow. Uh, can you see you? Oh, I thought they could. And then switch. Grab the other forearm. Pull across. You're just getting a different kind of shoulder stretch since we do. We simulate swimming. 
uh, that's a lot of shoulder stuff. And if you have a one or two pound, three pound weight at the most, we'll be using those today, but you don't have to, especially if you get tired, and that's fine. If you have a towel handy, I like the towel. You're gonna place it over your shoulder, and with your other hand, grab it, and pull that hand up your back. Hoist it. Hoist it up, be tall, don't slouch, and just have a nice, that internal rotation kind of stretch. So we'll probably spend about 10 minutes. We're also gonna add a little bit of lumbar stretching when we get to the lying down position on that. So, and then switch. Grab it, switch hands, hoist that one up. If you feel like there's one side that always feels a little tighter than the other when you do these on your own, then just spend a little bit longer. All these are videotaped too, uh, each session that we've had in the last three weeks, I think. So if I can always send links up in the future. You just want to do things on your own with this as a guide. I'll do that. We're going to do one more stretch on the wall with the shoulder. So if you go to something to hold on to, have the arm, the hand, the same height as the shoulder, and you're going to twist away. So your hand and your shoulder the same level. The elbow is straight as you're twisting away. So most of the stretch is going to be in the front of the shoulder. You might have some forearm, some hand. It all depends on what you're grabbing onto, and that's fine. And now slide your hand about three inches up the wall as you twist away. You'll notice it changes the feel of this. For most of us, it'll change the feel of the stretch a little bit. It all depends on how tight that capsule is. And I'll slide it another three inches, still twisting away. Arm is still straight, a long lever arm, but you can bend your elbow a little bit. But that does change how the inside the joint stretches. And then slide the hand all the way up the wall or the door, whatever you're using. Armpit close to the door. I like the body perpendicular. But if you want to lean a little bit toward the wall, if that's a better stretch for you, you're going to know how that feels for your shoulder, your armpit, that whole section on, on what you feel is a good stretch. You can also use your fingers to crawl up the wall a little bit further to add to that stretch on that. Again, should, uh, you know, you know, you guys, you all, you guys, you all, you all know stretching on what would be not good to feel. And then switch arms. Again, the hand and the shoulder are level with each other and you're twisting away. Be careful of your neck. If you have neck issues, don't look to the side too much. Kind of just look forward. You don't have to stretch that. And like I said, you might have a stretch in the forearm and the hand if you have the hand against the wall. Just make sure it feels okay. Now slide the hand up three inches. Again, stretching away. And it just shifts how the joint is stretching and some of the other muscles. And slide up another three inches. If you can still keep that arm straight, great. And then lastly, go all the way up the wall, armpit close to the wall. You can be perpendicular or rolling into the wall a bit if that feels better. Again, you know, choose what your body feels like you're getting a good stretch. Like I said, you can crawl up the wall slightly more with the fingertips. Grab the top of a door. It all depends on height and what you have. And then relax the arm. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of leg stretching. So grab behind you and grab your, your foot. And, oops, and we're gonna do a quad stretch. So in the front of the leg on that. If you wanna place your foot up on a chair or the ball, that might make it easier. If you don't feel much of a stretch, either bring your both knees closer together or bring the knee further behind you, but don't lean back to do it. Just go through the hip, not the lumbar spine. So be, be nice to yourself. You can also work on balance, but if you have something to hold on to, that's totally fine. And then switch legs. And this is definitely something we're doing more now than when we, I was swimming. I do a lot more stretching. I really should do more of that, of course, before we get in the pool or whatever exercises you're doing. Just always seem to be running late. Now, yeah, I should feel a stretch in the front of the leg, of course. 
And now put one foot in front of the other. We'll stretch the back calf. So uh, the back leg is straight, knee locked, feet, feet pointing forward. You can look forward too. If you have a wall to hold on to, it makes it, I just feel like it makes it a little bit easier, but it's okay to do it out you know, in the middle of the room. But keep that knee locked and the heel on the ground for now. If you look at your feet, see if you can point them forward. That'll just align that muscle a bit better. And now bend your back knee, but keep the heel on the ground. You'll notice that it shifts the stretch down toward the heel. Most of it, right? You know, some of this depends on how tight you are in certain areas where you feel it, but most of us are gonna feel that Achilles tendon area a little bit more. And then switch legs. Again, the back leg straight, heel on the ground, knee locked, and just kind of lean forward a bit until you feel good enough stretch. You can always back off a little bit if you need to. Find what's good for you. Now keep that position, but bend that back knee. What you don't really want to feel much of is compression in the front, in that joint that's in the front of the heel. You might feel a little bit, again, because we are decreasing the pressure, I mean increasing, but it shouldn't be a whole lot. Most of it you should feel behind. And the last one we're gonna do is a hamstring stretch. If you put your leg up on the ball or chair, piece of furniture, uh, so that you can have that hamstring, the higher up you place your leg, the more you don't have to lean forward. If it's a lower object, and you can do it on the floor too, you can just have the leg out in front, and you kind of have to tilt the pelvis, so poke your butt dock backwards to try to get a hamstring stretch. It's just slightly easier to just put it up on something. Try not to curl forward as you do it, be tall. And if you need to, just poke your butt backwards, your buttock, that tailbone, and that'll increase the stretch. You don't have to lean forward. If you have shooting lancinating pain down the leg, don't do this. <laughs> you keep the knee slightly bent. That's a whole different structure. And then switch legs. Again, if you need to poke, your tailbone backwards to increase the stretch. If you're tight enough, like myself, I just put the leg up there and I'm pretty much done. It's good enough of a stretch. All right, nice. So what we're gonna do as far as positions, we're gonna start on our stomach on the ball. And we're actually, gonna, we don't always start with swimming. We have to do some other warm up things. We're gonna do a little freestyle swimming and kicking couple other ball things. We'll progress to lying on the floor to do some of those and then lying on the ball and standing. So our first position will be lying over the top of the ball. And if you have some hand weights, if you're going to be using them today, uh, then have them kind of nearby. But we're not gonna use the hand weights right away. We're just gonna do a little warm up with the swim, uh, freestyle position. So get, kind of get in position so your head and shoulders are off the ball, your toes are on the floor, and just kind of do some regular freestyle. Even if you're not a swimmer, these are just exercises. We're just kind of simulating swimming because we miss it. Now think about rolling the ball a little bit side to side as you go. That'll help your shoulders so you're not quite so flat. Of course, in the pool, you can roll even more, and that's even better. Make sure you're looking down at the floor or the ball the whole time. Do not look forward. All right. So do a, we'll do about, well, let's go about 20 seconds of a warm-up. So look down, do your freestyle. You can do a nice, even pace. Today, it's all about distance per stroke. So we're going, going to go slower and really stretch out the strokes by holding about one six second in each position. So as your arms forward, you hold it for a second and switch for about a second. As we go, and like I mentioned, we're going to do 15, 30, 45, and 60 seconds. All right, so relax for a moment and get into position. All right, so go ahead and grab your weights if you're going to use them, and that's fine. We're going to start in about eight seconds while we get kind of position. The further your head and shoulders are off the ball, the harder more work it is. So you choose. So go ahead and ready, swim. Hold it out there for a second and switch arms for like one second. You can go whatever pace you want. Just kind of go slow back and forth. If you bring your body a bit off the ball, it's more work on that. And if your arms are higher up, okay, now go ahead and relax. That was 15 seconds. And now we'll do 30 seconds. So go ahead and start. Hold out just for a second. So each time you get 
to the position. Hold it. Make sure you're looking down or at the ball. So you're looking even further, like underneath you. Keep that neck relaxed. If you have neck issues, you can always rest your chin on the ball at times. Just take that break if you need to. You still have about eight more seconds. Remember, as you're reaching forward, if you can reach a little bit up, just add a little bit more work. Just make sure your shoulders feel okay. Now relax, rest for a second. For a second, we're resting for 10 seconds this time. And then we're gonna do 45 seconds. All right, go. So as you get there, hold it for like a second. Bring your arms maybe even a little bit up to the ceiling. Now, you can give you something else to think about. Even as you bring your arms up toward the ceiling, keep your shoulder blades down a little bit. Try not to hunch them up. So you kind of think about that shoulder blade coming down to your waist as you're doing that. Look down at the floor, rest your chin on the ball if you need to. On that, a little bit slower. Like I said, last week we did our little bit more sprints. Now we're going nice distance for stroke. You only have 10 seconds to go. And if you can, when you do your swimming, reach up a little bit toward the ceiling when you get toward the end. Excellent, but just make sure it's okay. And relax. So you go by quickly. Now we're doing, we do a five second break after the 15, 10 after the 30, and now 15, so we have five more seconds, and we'll do a one minute. Ready, go. Again, a little bit of a hold. Once you get to each end, you can do a little bit of lift with the arms at each end, that would be your one second hold. Remember, shoulder blades are thinking kind of down the best you can. Obviously, the muscles, all of them have to work, but I really want you to emphasize that. We're thinking about your posture, your neck, and all things like that, too. And that. And again, a little bit of, just a pause. Think about gliding in the water. You're reaching, pause. Not quite drowning drill. We're just kind of doing this. So you're over halfway done. We still only have 25 seconds to go. If your back is getting a lot of extension, which will, bend your knees so that you kind of curl over the ball more. That'll take a little bit of pressure off your low back, even though we're working those muscles still. Sometimes that extension for some people could be a little bit annoying. So just be nice, curl over the ball more. You only have five seconds. And then relax. See, that's not bad at all, but we're gonna do that for every stroke. On that. Now we're gonna do freestyle, no, not freestyle. Oh yeah, freestyle kicking. So you're gonna go over the top of the ball, support yourself on the ground, both legs will be off the ball, and you just do some kicking. We're gonna do a little warm up on that. Now again, if you have some back issues, just have your legs lower so your body curls over the ball on that. Good. Now, now that you're warmed up, we're gonna do our 15, 30, 45 a minute. Slowly, remember, so you're gonna hold one leg a little bit higher just for that one second, and we'll start in five seconds. So as you kick, it's a slow kick. So go ahead and start, hold that leg, and then switch. Try, try not to have the other leg too low, so it has to be working a little bit too. But like I said, lower your legs a bit if you do have some lumbar issues, or if you feel like it's getting a little tight. Just change your body position or just curl over the ball a bit more. You're still looking down at the floor? Oh, relax. You got three extra seconds because I kept talking. Sorry. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Okay, ready, go. We'll go 27 seconds. Remember, you're going kind of slow, so you hold that leg. You want to more, more work, have both legs in the air a little higher as you go, so it's a smaller, so you're kind of working both of them the whole time. Excellent buttock, paraspinal work, some hamstring in there. Lots of excitement with that. You have five more seconds. And relax. It's just harder than the quick kicks. It's different than the quick. I prefer, I don't know what I prefer. In the water, of course, I like the distance for stroke. Okay, 45 seconds, ready, go. Again, hold that leg up just for that extra second. Look down at the floor of the ball, depending on what angle you are. Make sure your neck's okay, your back's okay. Kind of assess those things. Don't work through pain. Change your position or take a break if you need to. Remember, we're still kind of going slowly. This appears to be the longest 45 seconds ever. Because you're not talking very much. Keep talking. Keep going. We're over halfway down, of course. 
I think we only have about 10 seconds to go. Again, nice, slow. Should start feeling your hamstrings eventually. That's exciting. <laughs> and, that. and then relax. We get a 15 second break here, and then we're gonna go one minute. Then we'll be all warmed up. Okay, about three seconds and we'll start. Get into position if you're not, and ready, go. If you don't feel much at all, angle yourself so your legs are higher and off the ball more, or higher up, and just hold them a little bit higher as you go. Only 45 seconds left. Check your neck position. Are you looking down or at least putting it uh, in a good position? You can even cross your arms on the floor and rest your head on them if you need to. Now check your back. Do you need to lower your legs a bit just because of your back? Can you hold your legs a little higher up? Make them work. Get the butt on hamstring. Everything should be, should feel something by now, I think. 20 seconds to go. Doing good. Nice and slow, nice hold. Just that one second hold. Six seconds. And relax. All right. Now we're going to do a little bit of diving on that, which means it's similar to what you just did, but we're going to take a little break in a way. You're going to kind of roll your face down toward the floor, and as you push backwards, have your legs stay up in the air, and then just roll back down. So you're trying to keep your, you're rolling, but you're keeping your body in a pretty straight line. Oh, we're doing about eh, roughly 40 seconds. And again, check your back. You do not have to lift your legs up too high if you want to keep them a little bit lower for that reason, and that's totally okay. And then relax. Now we're going to do breaststroke. Now again, back to the hand weights. If you're using hand weights, great. You don't have to, and you can ditch them at any point. But get into the, the position and do some, with some breaststroke swimming. Just do some warm-up. Look down at the floor. Like I said, if you have neck issues, just rest your head on the ball, the chin on the ball on that. Just don't look forward as you do it. If you have back issues, you can always bend your knees into the ball if that makes you feel better. You know, you know your body on that. All right, so we're going to do a 15-second breaststroke with weights if you have them on that. But remember, it's slow. Once you get to the out position, hold it there for a moment. So ready, go. Out, hold, and then come back in. And if you can, have your arms a little bit higher up. It's a little nicer if you point your thumbs toward the ceiling. And as you bring your arms back, bring your shoulder blades down toward your waist as you're coming back. Shoulder blades down, thumbs up. Now if you're really talented, oh relax, all right? That was only a 15 second one. Okay, now we'll do the third. Ready, go. You can as you even reach forward, and when your arms come up, you can bring your shoulder blades down as your thumbs come up toward the ceiling. It's harder than it sounds in a way. You have to really think about it. But it's a great way to train a muscle that we under train in an office situation. So eight more seconds. And in this case, we have our thumbs up just because we're on land. And that's a little nice for the columnar humeral joint. So relax. 10 second break. And we'll do 45 seconds. If you're not feeling much at all, you can hold it a little bit longer. Ready, go. So once you get out in front, if you hold them up, you do a two or three second hold. And then, but remember, if you can bring your shoulder blades down, you get triple bonus points that can be cashed in at the end of our sessions. Up, uh, hold. If you need more of a break, again, just have your arms go down toward the floor more as you're recovering. Hold up. Just a nice hold. Looking down at the floor, hopefully still think about those shoulder blades. It'll take your mind off of everything else. Try to see if you can get your shoulder blades down. Like I said, it sounds easier than it is because you're really activating other muscles too. On that, and relax. We'll do a 15 second hold, a 15 second rest, and we'll do it one minute.
four seconds. So go ahead and get into position if you're not. And go. Arms out in front, do that hold, come back. And of course, these are just normal exercises anyway. We're just trying to simulate the swimming part. So looking down at the floor, again, thumbs up when you get toward the up in the front, lift up, shoulder blades down. Again, bend your knees if you need to protect your back a bit more and have a little less pressure. Even those muscles will still be working, so don't worry about that. On that nice and slowly with that little bit of hold. Still looking down or rest your chin on the ball. You only have 25 seconds to go. Doing good. Up and on. All right. Last 15 seconds. We're heading down that final lap. You can see the T out in front of you. On that one, almost there. And relax. Yay. And of course, following a breaststroke swim, we're going to do breaststroke kick on that part. We'll do a little warm up first. So, kind of practice your breaststroke kick first to so roll over the top of the ball. Of course, legs are out behind you. And as you're doing, simulate your breaststroke kick. It's hard to get a lot of your body off the ball, depending on what kind of ball you have, I suppose. You might have to angle your body a little bit more, but kind of play with it, whatever can give you the well, the best workout really is what we're looking at. And we'll, like usual, we'll do our same, pardon me, 15. We'll start in about four seconds. Ready, go. Okay, and do your breaststroke kick. Remember, pause when you get up and out. So when you get up toward the ceiling, pause there. If you need to um, lower your hips and all that because of your back, of course, that's all right. And relax. Freestyle is easier than breaststroke as far as being on the ball. Ready, go. 30 seconds. But hold your legs up in the air as you pause and then kick out to the side and then come back in. So as you kick out, pause. But try to have them up there if you can. Looking down at the floor still. You need to check your back position. Of course, that's okay. You have seven seconds. Oh, I mean 12 on that. Now you have seven seconds. Kick up, out, pause. Remember pausing today and relax. Now we'll do 45 seconds in about four seconds. So if you're not in position, go ahead and get into position. Ready, go. Remember you're holding it up and out there. The nice uh, lengthen the pause. If you don't feel much at all, kick up and out and just hold your legs out there for a while. And that's fine. That. So we're trying to get a little bit longer in a way, in a strengthening way, versus our faster twitch muscle fibers that we kind of worked on last week. A little bit slower, kind of halfway in between. Ah, doing good, you have about 12 more seconds. You don't feel much at all. Like I said, just hold them up longer on that. Just make sure your back's okay. You might have to, again, curl into the ball a little bit more. And that, and relax. Ten seconds. One minute. Four seconds to go. If you're not in position, go ahead and get in position and go. If you really want to challenge yourself, keep your legs in there higher up the whole time and do little movements so it kind of works the whole time. Or just pause up and out and hold it a little bit longer. Look down at the floor, make sure your neck's okay, and don't check your back. Make sure that's all right, too. We're already halfway over. Only 30 seconds to go. Nice kick up and out, pause. Holding there just a little bit longer. <clears throat> Doing good. Only 15 seconds to go. Five seconds. And I don't care, you might even modify any of these however you need to, of course. And relax. And just in the kneeling position, just do some nice ball rolls where you roll the ball forward and stretch and then back. So as you roll the ball forward, just whatever feels good for your body. 
for an hour. Good. And now as you roll the ball forward, keep your hips close to the ball the whole time. So you're basically falling forward. Get that trunk, the front part of the trunk. We're working a lot of the posterior core, which is your back, but uh, hamstring. We will get to the front part of your core, side part of your core in, in just moments. This will get a little bit of that abdominal area. Oh, and for those of us with some neck issues, keep your shoulders down. I mean, I know I talked about it a lot, but it, for most people, the lower traps are not activated nearly enough. This gives you an opportunity to lower them while you exercise to really train that muscle a little bit better. Keep that pressure off your neck. Okay, now roll the ball forward. Bring your hips two inches from the ball and roll the ball over to the right and then over to the left while your hips stay right where those two inch mark was. So keep your shoulders down if you can, a lot harder, but just side to side rolling. And then relax. Roll the ball out. Now this time bring the, the hips almost touching the ball and then back two inches. Check your shoulder position. Can you still pull down? So the hips touch the ball almost and then back. Down and back. You'll feel arm, feet, uh, stomach, those kind of things, those muscles, and then relax. One more. Roll the ball out. Hips toward the ball. Now roll the ball a little bit to the right and left. Keep the shoulders down. We're giving your posterior muscle groups a, a break here by working more, more of this anterior group because we still have butterfly. Shoulder blades down and then relax. All right, butterfly position. So back over the top of the ball. Practice a little bit if you're not without the weights, if you're using weights, just kind of get your shoulders going. A little kink there. Huh. This what? Oh, nothing. Kink? The kink in my shoulder. Uh -oh. Give a kink and stretch a little bit. On that. All right, so we're going to do 15, 30, 45 in a minute with our butterfly position. Okay, we'll start in five seconds. Ready, go. Remember, you can either hold them up behind you or out in front, but do a pause, or if you want, pause both positions. Wow, that's hard. Oh, my feet aren't up the thing. Oh, relax. It relaxed two seconds early, but we had three seconds uh, before I'm earlier. Okay, ready, go. 30 seconds. Now, you always have masters for If you want to go faster instead of slower, that's fine. On that. All right, keep going. You still have about 13 seconds. Looking down at the floor, on that, and relax. Taking 10 second break, we're gonna go 45 seconds. If you're not in position, go and get in position and start. Remember, you're going slow if you can, hold it one position, you can even hold it out in front. Make sure your neck is looking down toward the ball. Bend your knees, again, if you have neck, back issues. Lots, so many choices. Ex and exercise the choices that you need to exercise. Pretty good. Two thirds of the way done. Again, a nice hold. Hold. If you want to make it harder, just keep your arm further off the ground the whole time. So that's to work on the way back and the way forward. On that. And then relax. And then we'll do a one minute. Okay, if you're not in position, get in position. Ready, go. Like I said, look down at the floor. You can even think about your shoulder blades, especially as you're pulling back down with the fly. Just emphasizing that shoulder blade coming down just a little bit extra. 
one of the best lower traps of anyone at the club. <sighs> And good, almost halfway. Pause, if you need to pick up the pace, of course, that's fine. Check your neck, check your back. Check that shoulder blade. <clears throat> Still have 22 more seconds. And good, final home stretch, we're on our last 25. Halfway down the pool already. The tee is coming up really close now. One or two more strokes. And relax. Good. And of course, finished it off. Butterfly uh, kick. And so go ahead and get into position. Practice a bit so you know you're kind of the right, especially to know how far off the ball you want your legs. Now, practice a bit too if you want to bounce off the ball. Now remember, as you come through the ceiling, you bounce really high over the legs. That's a lot of work for your paraspinals, which run up and down your back, which is not necessarily bad, but it is quite a bit of work because it has to decelerate once you get up there on that. So we will do uh, our usual pattern, and we'll start in three seconds. Okay, ready, go. So butterfly pause at the top if you can. You just figure out where the top is. If you want to come down and bounce off the ball to get there, that's a tremendous amount of work. Not necessarily in a bad way. Just make sure it's okay for you. On that, and then relax. Now, 30 seconds, ready, go. You can also just go all the way to the floor with the toes to give a larger range to make it a slightly easier in one sense. Depends on how hard you bounce off the ball. Looking down at the floor, of course, and just don't go up so high if you have other issues. Five seconds, and then relax. 10 second break, we'll do 45. There's a lot of work for your paraspinals, your butt up, that's all, all your muscles back there, so ready, go. And if you can hold it up there for that second, if you can, excellent. You choose the range, how high up you can go, Remember, it's a lot of back extension if you go real high. So for those of you who need to be careful of that, be careful. And good. About 15 more seconds. About nine more seconds. And relax. And of course, the last one is one minute. Again, modify, you know, master's prerogative, go get coffee, whatever works. All right, get in position if you're not. And ready, go. Like I said, if it's getting real tired, just have your legs in a low position and don't bring them up so high. Check your neck, are you looking down? You keep your legs really straight, you get hamstring, but even if you bend your knees, you'll still get some good hamstring stuff going as we go along here. If you want extra bonus points, squeeze your buttock a little extra together as you're lifting your legs. And that'll kick in the glutes, you know, a good 15, 20% more. They still have to work to do this, so, so it's not like they're not working. You're doing good. We're on our last lap, 15 seconds to go. Doing good. Seven seconds. And relax. Since I can't see you, I just assume you're doing good. Or at least you're doing the best you can. All right, so now we're gonna lie on your back. Have the ball and your weights near you. But we're gonna actually take a little break by doing some lumbar stretching like we usually do on that part. So lying on the floor or on your mat, whatever you have. We're gonna start with simple knee to chest stretch. This will be real nice since we did all that posterior work 
we'll be stretching a lot of those muscles we were just working to make them happy. It's all about making our muscles happy, apparently. All right, so bring your right knee up to your chest, grab a hold. If you want more of a stretch, straighten out the other leg. If you have hip issues, angle the knee out to the side, and that tends to decrease the pressure on the hip joint if you need to. And the stretch should be mainly in the back part somewhere. Huh? Back, back here a little bit. Now switch legs. You shouldn't have a whole lot of, the whole thing you don't want to feel is pinching in the joint, the groin area. That's a compression issue, so that's when you bring your knee out to the side. Otherwise, you know, this is, this is not a huge stretch. You should feel just like a pull compared to some others, like the hamstring stretch is huge. But now bring both knees up to your chest, and you can do ankle circles. You can do the alphabet. When you get real talented, do that. Right foot, do the alphabet forward and the left foot backwards. Now, I haven't hit that level of talent, but I'm sure someone could do it. And the closer you bring your knees to your chest, the more the lumbar stretches too. All right, so straighten out the right leg and place it on the ground. With your right hand, grab the outside of the left knee and pull across to that right hip. You can pull all the way toward the floor if you want, because that'll just stretch further up the spine. That's not a bad thing. If you're just trying to stretch lumbar only, just don't let the hip come up off the floor. If you end up hitting the floor with your knee, you're too flexible, you need to tuck that right hip forward, underneath you forward, and that'll pop that knee up off the floor if you need to. I don't have that issue. I have lots of room. No, lots, of room. lots of space before it ever hit the floor. And then switch legs. Now with your left hand, grab the outside of the right knee and pull across to that left hip. You can even have that right arm out to the side as kind of an anchor support on that. Most of the stretch will be kind of the buttock and then up the spine if you're able to pull a little bit further on that part. And then relax. And then cross your, uh, bend both your knees, put your feet flat, cross your right leg over your left leg and bring your left knee up to your chest. This will get a lot more of that hip joint, sometimes piriformis, that muscle group, those rotators on that part. It's kind of a weird feeling stretch. It should be like a deeper, not bone stretch, but you know, deeper stretch. Oh, I forgot to mention, if it's too much of a stretch, cross that leg further over so your knees are almost together. And that will really greatly reduce it if you can't quite cross the leg on that. And then switch legs. Cross the left leg over the right, bring your right knee up to your chest, or you could use a towel around that right leg to assist you if you need to in the future. All that is possible. Excellent stretches to do in general, especially if people are stiff in the morning. Those are my highly, highly recommended stretches for lumbar people. Now take your ball, place it on your stomach, feet are on the floor, knees are bent, and just press the ball into both legs and hold it. Now as you're pushing, suck that stomach in towards your spine and that'll engage your obliques more. And make sure the back does not arch up further than where you started. Now relax and push the ball into your legs. You're pushing pretty hard. Hold it there, suck in the stomach. And now have the hand in the position so you can roll the ball up toward the top of your knees and back down. But you're pushing in your legs the whole time. Now check your neck, is it relaxed? It should be, even though it wants to work with you here. Is the stomach sucked in? And now relax. Bring your right knee to your chest. Now just push into that leg, but don't let it move. Suck in that stomach and push hard. Hold that position. Again, stomach sucked in, neck is relaxed. And then relax. Switch legs, left knee up to your chest, push and hold. You can push pretty hard on this one because it's not that hard. So suck in the stomach and hold. And again, we're giving those posterior core muscles a break now. Now bring the right knee back up to your chest. This time, push in the leg, but let the leg go out away from you and then back in, but you're pushing the ball into the leg while the leg is pushing into the ball. You're counter-pressuring. 
how hard you push, just make sure you count the pressure. Check your stomach, is it sucked in? Check your neck, is it relaxed? And your back is not arching up. And then switch legs, same thing, left leg, push and let it drift out and back in while you constantly push. Check your back, check your neck, check your stomach. One more, go back to the right leg. And now have your heel about two inches off the ground as you push it out and back in. So it's a little bit lower, but then neck, definitely do not let your back arch up as you go and suck in the stomach and make sure your neck is relaxed. Push as hard as you can control it. And then switch legs. Same thing with the other leg. Push, have a little back leg a little bit lower. Stomach is tight, back is not moving, and your neck is relaxed. And now both knees up to your chest and push into both legs, but don't let them move. Now this is a bit harder to hold that back position. So that could be your limiting factor when we get to the moving. Do not let the back arch up any further than when you started. And then relax. And now as you push, push your legs out and in, but don't let the back arch up, sucking the stomach, neck relaxed. Have your feet go toward the ceiling more if you want to make it easier. If, and the easier means your back doesn't arch up that way. If you can control that back position, that's the limiting factor for most of us on how hard you push and how far out you go and relax. <clears throat> and now do one more of those. So check your back position. Do not let it arch any further than where you started. Even if you only do little tiny movements or do very gentle pushes. Check your stomach, is it sucked in? Is your neck relaxed? And then relax. All right, and now we're gonna do the bicycle without the ball. So put the ball to the side, both knees to your chest, stomach position, back position, let your right leg go out away from you, and then your left, the old time bicycle. You can even support underneath your buttock if you have some back issues, and that can make it a little bit easier, but also keep your neck relaxed. So do not, you know, I talk about the back position because if the back starts arching up, you're doing a whole different type of muscle group. So we're trying to protect as much as we can. Okay, now that you warmed up for that part, we're gonna do backstroke kicking. So both legs out in front of you, and then you're gonna kick up and you can practice for the moment. But check your back position. I had to have my knees a little bit bent. If I had my legs all the way straight, I wouldn't be able to do it with my back will arch up on that. You got it? Okay, so we'll do backstroke kicking. We'll start in five seconds. All right, same pattern, 15, 30, 45, 60. Ready, go. Check your back, make sure it's not arching up. Can you suck in that stomach a little bit more? Just have your knees closer to your chest and your legs not as straight to be successful. Did you skip backstroke swimming? And then relax, no, that's next. We just haven't been on the ball yet. Okay, now do fit 30 seconds, ready, go. And oh, I forgot, we're doing slower. So hold it when that one leg gets toward the ceiling. Now check your neck. Is it an okay, relaxed position, best you can? A nice hold, like a one second hold. You can go faster if you want, that's fine. Check your stomach, check your back. As it gets tired, you might bring your knees closer and closer to your chest. Modify your backstroke kick, that's fine. And relax. And then of course, so 45, this seems longer. 45 seconds, ready, go. You could lie, no one would know. I could, man. Well, they might be watching their own clock. And wait, you got to out of four seconds. Well, then they just keep going. It's on mute, they won't know. Okay, you're doing good. Hold it, well, you might be doing good. You're doing great. All right, 15 seconds already. And the great part about this is you're gonna start getting feel, healing feeling hip flexors, a little bit of the quad having to hold the legs up there, as well as your abdominals and other muscle groups having to work. Uh, uh, doing good. We're over two thirds of the way done. So you know, only seven more seconds. And again, adjust your leg position closer to your chest and that and relax. And I do think of the back arching up as your limiting factor for strength of those muscle groups. So that's our barometer here. Not that you could do it, but if that starts moving. Okay, last one, ready, go. Five. 
And like I said, if you put your hands underneath your buttock, you know, like the little fist there kind of supports the low back, you might be a bit more successful for some of you that have some back issues on that. You can try it anyway, see what you think. Check your stomach. Is your neck relaxed? And is your back staying in that same position? I always flatten mine out against the bed to make sure it stays that way. Some people have a natural arch and you can do a little towel roll on that. You only have 25 seconds left. Again, if you can go slow, great. Keeping that position, <coughs> excuse me, position. Doing good. Almost done, not quite though. Where are we? Uh, 10 more seconds. Uh, do good. Five more seconds. And relax. Jesus. Yay. Now put your legs over the top of the ball. You're still lying on the floor. And rest. We're going to do a little of the posterior muscle groups to give what we just did a little break. So just place your feet on the ball, but just roll it out and in. Don't lift your hips up. You're just rolling the ball out. If you feel like you want to stretch for a moment, rolling it out, great. Just nice, nice and easy. And then you can roll it a little bit to the right and left. Your hips are still on the ground though. Again, very little muscle effort. You should be totally relaxed with your upper body. You're not straining at all. And now put your feet flat on the ball. And now we lift your hips up and down. How high up is up to you and your ball and your back and all that as you lift up and down. You can also press with your hands to help assist. That's totally legit. That. Now, the number one rule here, well, many rules, but the next rule is do not let your hamstrings cramp. They feel like they're gonna cramp, stop. and. Stretch them a bit. But now lift your hips up in the air and hold them up in the air while you roll the ball out and in. Keep your neck relaxed. Make sure that's relaxed. How high your hips are depends on your control as you roll out and in or just do little tiny rolls. Again, make sure your hamstrings are okay. That's a limiting factor here. And then relax. One more of these. Lift your hips up in the air. Roll the ball a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. You can't go too far. You can use your arms to help you know, stabilize, but make sure your neck stays relaxed as you're rolling to the right, rolling to the left, back to the right, and then back to the left. And then relax. All right. Our final position, have a seat on the ball. That's not quite our position, but after you sit on the ball, Roll a little bit forward and just lean over the ball. So you're stretching. That's not our final position. This is our rest position. Stretch those front muscle groups. As long as it feels good, obviously. It doesn't feel good. Don't do this. Stretch on that. Because we still have not done backstroke. We did backstroke kick, but we have not done backstroke swim. So go to the backstroke swim position. Kind of do some arms, see how it feels. Remember, you're looking up at the ceiling. Do not try to crank on your neck, but that's a lot of work. So if you need to support your neck, or if you just need to have your head on the ball, it's awkward for the swim part of it, but it's way easier on your neck. Or do single arm, having one hand behind your head the whole time. It's your choice. So now grab your hand weights. Ooh, I'm gonna do the clock. Okay, I'll put it right here. Put on the table. Oh yeah, I can see it from there. Okay, we're gonna start in about five seconds since I have to get the clock ready. On that, we'll start in five seconds. Again, if you use the hand weights, great. Remember, we're pausing, ready, go. So one arm over, don't, and hold it up more toward the ceiling on that. And the other arm, even though it's down by your side, you're still holding it up a little bit. Still about four more seconds. Look up at the ceiling while we do it, and then relax. We'll do a five second break on this one. And now 30 seconds, ready, go. Hold your arms up, so even the down arm is up a little bit, so the muscles are still working a bit more. Check your neck position. Are you looking up? Do you need to support your neck? You can, and obviously it's a modified backstroke. Make sure your shoulder joint is happy the whole time. Super happy. Keep looking up. 
You're working on those anterior muscle groups in the neck, so make sure it's okay. Now relax. We'll do a little 10 second hold. I mean, 10 second break. All right, get into position. 45 seconds and go. And again, if you can do the holes now, it's better for you to kind of do a little faster if you feel like you're getting more out of it. You know, that's totally okay. We're just trying to fatigue the muscle a little bit in a different way, if you can. Doing good. Thirty seconds into it, only fifteen more. Looking up at the ceiling, supporting your neck. Whatever you need to do there is fine. In that part. Five more seconds, and then relax. Last one. Then we have a little bit in standing, and we're done. Yay! So about seven more seconds. If you're not in position, get in position and go. Hold a little bit on both sides, in that part. <clears throat> what I also like about these is the shoulder exercises, obviously, but different than what we do on our injury prevention class on that part. Again, if it doesn't feel like enough work, you can either do a heavier weight, which would be choice number one, or just hold it longer, or of course faster. You're over halfway done already. Double arm backstroke is totally okay. You can even do an elementary backstroke if you're feeling a bit fatigued. And that, side stroke, maybe we should do side stroke next time. It's really hard, but we could do it. Okay, about 13 more seconds. Ugh. Six more seconds. And then relax. Okay. Now go ahead and stand up. Have the ball with you. And go ahead and have a seat on the ball. We're just going to finish off with some just quick, simple quad work. But put your hands on the ball because I do not want the ball to travel away when you do this. So keep your hands on the ball the whole time. And go ahead and stand up and then come back down. So only stand up as far as you can that your hands are still on the ball because I've had people sit back down and the ball was not there. So you're not going to stand up that far. So that's all. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So now go ahead and stand up, but have your hands touching the ball and keep standing. Check your body position, neck should be relaxed, poke your buttock backwards, fingertips still holding onto that ball. And now, remember, some of you are here when we do the fool of buttock maneuver. So you're not going to quite sit on the ball. You get the ball's going to think you're going to sit on it, but you're not going to. So go down as if you're going to sit down, but then come back up. Psych. Back down, yeah, psych. Down. The ball's going, oh, no. Down, touch the ball, and come back up. Same thing, touch the ball, back up. Down and up. We'll do about 10 more. You're still holding on to the ball. That's two. Three, make sure your knees are kind of going over your toes. Four, and not in front of the toes. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. With my uh, seniors, we call that the getting off the toilet maneuver. <laughs>